worship him and say father we thank you for tonight we give you praise for such a time like this we give you praise come on just honor him tonight let us glorify him he's a glorious god he's a good god father we worship you daddy we thank you tonight i want you to bless his name because the entrance of his word gives light and he gives understanding unto the simple the bible says we are without shall the young man keep his ways pure it is by binding his laws, your laws upon his neck. Now, the psalmist says, Father, he says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I want you to say, Father, tonight, let your word come to me. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, with accuracy, let your word come unto me. Order my steps according to your word, and let no iniquity prevail over me. In the name of Jesus, come and give him praise tonight. Just worship him tonight. Father, Lord, we thank you. There is no one like you. For in Jesus, mighty name we have prayed. And somebody say, praise God. You're welcome.
welcome to service tonight. You can please be seated. Welcome somebody beside you. Tell them it's good to see them. Praise God. Maybe we can have some lights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good to see everybody. Welcome to church. Praise God. Welcome to church. Hope everybody has had a good week. We're going to get into the word right away. Tonight, I'm going to be speaking on walking in, uh, hmm. I want to be careful here, okay, thank you Holy Spirit, all right, all right. I'm going to be calling it taking over the territories. Taking over what? The what? The territories. Taking over the territories. I was going to teach about something else, but I had a caution in my spirit to quickly talk about taking over the territories. Let us go tonight into the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 2. I hope you're here with your notes and with your Bibles as we look into this Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24, taking over the territories. Deuteronomy chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Now, this is the word of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord to the children of Israel. He says here, Rise, take your journey, and cross over the river Anon. Look, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and engage him in battle. Let's read that last part together again. One, two, go. He says what? Begin to possess it and do what? And engage him in battle. Let's read that same scripture from the New Living Translation from the NLT. They will turn me up to 2, verse 24. They will turn me up to 2, verse 24. The New Living Translation. They will turn me up to 2, verse 24. Moses continued. Then the Lord said, now get moving. Tell somebody who said, tell the person, you need to get moving. <laughs> Just tell the person, next, you need to get moving. He says, yeah, cross the Arnon Gorge. Look, I will hand over to you, Sihon, the king of the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and I will give you his land. But what should you do once you go? Is this what? Attack him and begin to occupy the land. Again, what should you do? Attack him and begin to occupy the land. One of the things as believers that we don't do well enough is to be fierce with the promises that God has for us. To be what? To be fierce. To be strong. Many times we are too relaxed but what God had promised us, but what God had said. And you are seeing the word of the Lord come to Joshua, I mean, so, sorry, to Moses in this place, to the children of Israel, God saying to them, look guys, I know I promised you the land. I gave you the promise through Abraham. Then I spoke through my servant Moses in the book of Exodus. Right, now, this land that I'm going to give you, you need to get moving. Stop waiting for me to move. You need to what? Get more. Let's look at another scripture here. Let's look at the book of Exodus chapter 14. The book of Exodus chapter 14. Get moving. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And I want you to look at verse 15. The Lord said to the children of Israel, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to get moving. 
stop standing still. Tell them to go forward. Stop standing still. Tell them to go forward. But we have nowhere to go. God said, go forward. At this time, they had just been out of the land of Egypt and they were camping by Pihahiroth and then between Pihahiroth and Migdal and all of a sudden they saw Pharaoh and his chariots coming after them. Now they have every reason to stop or surrender. They have two options. They could stop, uh, three options. They can stop and surrender, right? They can fight back and the thought is they can keep pressing on. But going forward to where? And God just said to them, you know what? Children, I brought you this far. And many times we hide under where we are just still believing God. We're just waiting for God to do something and God said, you attack them. God said to them, you know, and these were people that probably all their lives they were slaves. In fact, many of the children of Israel at that time, many of those generations were born into the land. They never understood what liberty, what freedom was. You understand? Freedom was uh, strange to them. Moses was born into captivity. Aaron was born into captivity. Miriam was born into captivity. Many of those people, right? And then when they got out of the land, you see God saying to them in the wilderness, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, God said, I'm giving you the land. But God has a king in the place. But God had giants in the place. God said, no, that's not enough for you to turn back. But God, this career field is so strong, it's so tough, it's so difficult to break through. And God said, no, you go for it. That's what I have for you. And then I'm waiting for God to, and God said, no, you don't retreat. Why do you cry to me? That's the next question that God asked Moses. That's, can you please give me that scripture in the New Living Translation? Please, that's in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. You see, possessing a new territory actually suggests that you need to dispossess or take ownership. Again, we try to look at this again. Tell the people to do what? To get moving. At no time, she would be stagnant. Again, at no time, she would be stagnant. What did God say here to them? Tell the people to what? To get moving. If you don't get moving, what happens is what the enemy will catch up with you. Unless God instructs you otherwise to stand still. Tell them to get moving. You know, I was talking to, yeah, I think I was talking to Shalem and, and uh, Ellis last week. I think it was last week you were having this conversation in the car. And I was saying to them that, you know, well, God, when God made, created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, he gave them a mandate and he said to them what? That you should dominate the earth, right? And you're going to ask yourself, but God, what was on the earth for them to dominate? You know, the word dominion, the word to dominate actually suggests there will be what? Rebellion and contention. You know what dominion actually means? Force to bow to you, right? So God is suggesting to them there are wars you must conquer on this earth. But they thought it was just going to be like, you know, Q, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Amen. Which is what many people do. Q, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. It's not Q, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. It's whatever. God, what Jesus said, even whatever you bind on the earth, not that he will bind for you, will bound in heaven. Enemies don't just come because you have a vision, because you have a dream and say, you know what? Joseph, or you know, Ram, brother Roger, you know, God told us that you're going to be the leader. Guess what? All of us are going to come and bow to you. It doesn't work that way. Amen? It doesn't work that way. It goes beyond the average for us to walk in dominion. So possessing territories suggest to us that when there are wars and battles to be fought, there are wars and what? And battles to be fought. Says to somebody, there are wars and there are battles to be fought. Some of them are going to be what? Spiritual wars. Some of them are going to be battles of the mind. I'm going to have to fight the battle of inferiority. But God, I'm new. But God, I'm strange to this. 
but God, I don't speak like them. I'm not educated enough. The battles you're going to have to fight. The battles you're going to have to fight. Let's look at Joshua chapter 21. Joshua chapter 21 and verse 43. In Joshua chapter 21. Joshua chapter 21. Now, remember, um, the book of Deuteronomy comes before the book of Joshua. So, in the book of Deuteronomy that we read, that chapter 2, verse 24, where God said to the children of Israel that they are going to have to fight for the land, uh, that's why the fact that he promised them. And that's the other thing. Many people also think because God promised, there wouldn't be battles to fight. That's the next assumption that believers make. Because God promised, I wouldn't have to fight for it. It's wrong. It is what? I think you, I, I don't think, at, I, at times, I don't think we are hungry or desperate enough. Do you know what it means to be desperate enough? In the book of Second Kings, the Bible tells us of some lepers in the land at that time. The word of the Lord had come through Elisha and said, you know what, in this land, there's going to be an economic turnaround. Let's quickly turn to that scripture, the book of Second Kings. There's going to be an economic turnaround. God had made his promises in the book of Second Kings. Let's look at it again, Second Kings chapter 7. Let's go Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Elisha had given the word of the Lord and said, you know what, by this time tomorrow, <laughs> there will be the, a, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Now quickly jump to verse 3. The Bible says, now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, let's read it together. Why are we sitting here till we die? You have to challenge yourself. Why are we just sitting here? God gave a promise. Even God doesn't put the seed in the mouth of the birds. <laughs> Does he? He doesn't. That's what Father in verse 4. One to go. Let's read together. He says, if we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there, huh? And if we sit here, what is it? We die also. Every die is die. <laughs> right? If we sit in the city, we will die. If we sit where we are, because remember that in those days, lepers are not allowed to mingle with people. They were isolated. They were already even isolated from their families. So they said to themselves, okay, now therefore come. Let us make a move. Let us go forward. What will happen? It is this here. He says, we go to this army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. Now let's quickly jump to verse 5. Verse 5, let's read together. The Bible says, And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. I thought this place is a secure place. I thought this place is a place where nobody makes it. Guess what? God had gone to action. Listen here. God is just asking you and I to act like David. Do you really think it was that little stone that David threw that brought Goliath down? God just needed somebody to throw something. I'm telling you this. If David threw just a dust at Goliath, he would have fallen. Are you getting it? But if you don't make that move, God ain't going to go to work. Praise God. The Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots. So God had gone to work. He had gone to work ahead of you. And he said to them, to hear the noise of the chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, let's sit together. Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight. And they left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, 
and their donkeys and they fled for their lives and when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp verse 8 uh -huh, they went into one tent uh -huh, and ate uh -huh, and drank wow he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies the last thing to happen to you is for God to prepare a table before you and you don't show up because you're afraid of moving and you don't show up go by that business go by that land go by that company go apply for that job stop holding back tell somebody who says stop holding back stop holding back I'm not qualified I don't have enough Now, now for verse, now look at verse 9. These guys just became superstars. They walked into a victory that God had already possessed for them. Look at this. Look at verse 9. They just turned to superstars. Can you imagine CNN focusing on them that night and saying, praise God. You know what? Some lepers rescued the nation. Do you, was it really the lepers that rescued the nation? God just wants you to walk into that victory. God just wants you to walk into that victory. Just say to somebody, God wants you to walk into that victory. Go talk to somebody else. God wants you to walk into that victory. Look at somebody else. God wants you to walk into that victory. Somebody else. God wants you. To now pray to yourself. God wants me to walk into that victory. Bible says, though I know you have little strength, but you have feared, but you fear my name. You honor me. So they went, they called to the gatekeepers of the city. Verse 10, lepers, people that were irrelevant, that were being condemned. In verse 10, the Bible says, they went and they called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, we went to the Syrian camp and surprisingly no one was there, not a human sound only horses and donkeys can you imagine god even tied they even tied down the donkeys for them <laughs> hallelujah god had tied down some businesses for you to buy he had tied down some things for you to buy listen but you are just saying over oh, god you know this is fear cripples fear hesitates faith jumps again fear does what it hesitates and what does faith do it jumps Fear does what? Hesitates. What does faith do? It jumps. Again, fear does what? Hesitates. And what does faith do? He jumps. I don't have to have all the facts. I don't have to have all the facts. Now it's time for us to move forward. Praise God. No, I say you jump to open to Joshua chapter 21 verse 43. Look at Joshua chapter 21 verse 43. Somebody is going to have to take action tonight. Somebody is going to have to take action. Joshua chapter 21 in verse 43. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land which he had sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it. And what did they do? And they dwelt in it. Now go to verse 44. Uh huh. Look at verse 44. One to go. It says, What? The Lord did what? Gave them rest all around, according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. And not a man. Now look at that. I want you to read this place boldly. Uh -huh. It says, Not a man of all their enemies stood against them. What happened? The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 84, verse 7. Psalm 84, verse 7. They go from strength to strength, every one of them, till they appear before God in Zion. I can also translate that scripture to mean that what? They go from one level of victory to another level of victory to what? Till they appear before God in Zion. Remember the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians, says, Now thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And makes manifest in us the sweet savour of his knowledge. And 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, what does he say? 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Not a man. 
not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Not one. Not one. I may face those challenges, but something is going to happen here. At the end of the day, there's going to be one person that's going to be standing that is lifting the belt, and I can tell you, devil, that person is me. Praise God. You have to tell yourself that. There's going to be many battles to fight, uh huh. But at the end of the day, there's going to be one person that is standing in the ring that is lifting up the champion's belt. And who's that person is going to be? That person is going to be me. That's what you ought to tell the devil every time. At the end of the day, there's going to be one person that is lifting the champion's cup. Hallelujah. And who's that person going to be me? That's going to be the person that's going to be me. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. How many times does he cause us to triumph? All the time. How many times? All the times. Look at that again. Look at that again. Look at that verse, verse 43 again. Look at that verse 43 again. Go back to that verse 43 of Joshua chapter 21. It says here, the Lord gave to them all that he promised. Meaning that when Joshua looked at the list of the promises of God, when Joshua looked at the list, okay, God, you promised me 500 things, you know, and at the end of the day, he looked at, okay, number one, Number two, number 100, number 300, number 400, number 499, ooh, number 500, none was missing. Hallelujah! That ought to be your testimony. Not that, well, you know, in this life, you win some battle and you lose some battles. That's the story of what? Of people that don't know their place in God. You know, in this life, you win some battles and you, and you, and you lose some battles. Where is that written? Can you show me that in the Bible? Praise God. Is there anything anywhere in the Bible? Nowhere is that written. Nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere is that written. Nowhere is that written. Praise God. Let's look at the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 17. Taking over the territories. Take over your business, take over your field, take over the neighborhood, take over the land, take over the cities. People are complaining, there is no job. You ask them, are you selling? Are you selling your possessions? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy. I'm here to buy. Praise God. Joshua 17. Joshua chapter 17. Look at verse 14 to 17. Then the Jewish children of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given us only one lot? Joshua 17 from verse 14. Joshua 17 from verse 14 to 17. The children of, the children of Joseph, they went to Joseph. Sorry, they went to Joshua. Give, give that scripture to me in the New Living Translation. Joshua 17 verse 14, NLT. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Joshua 17 verse 14 from the New Living Translation. The descendants of Joseph came to Joshua, let's say together, and they asked him, why have you given us only one portion of land as our homeland when the Lord has blessed us with so much? When the Lord has blessed us so much, why are you giving us just this little? In fact, give that scripture back to me in the, new, in the, in the, in the NKJV. Let's go back to read in the NKJV. The New Kingdom Station, NKJV, quickly. The descendants of Josh, Joseph came to Joshua. Uh -huh. Children of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given us only one lot and one share to inherit? Since we are a great people, inasmuch as the Lord has blessed us until now. Look at verse 15. So Joshua answered them, uh -huh. Let's read together. If you are a great people, then what should you do? Then go up to the forest and clear a place for yourself. They are in the land of the parasites and the giants. So the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for you. Verse 16, then the children of Joseph said, the mountain country is not enough for us. Find that one for me in the NLT. The mountain country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley, they have chariots of iron, both those in Beth Shan and the surrounding settlements, and those in the valley of Jezreel, they are too strong for us. Verse 17, then Joshua said to the inhabitants, to the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, the descendants of Joseph, since you 
are so large and strong, you'll be given more than one portion. Verse 18, the forest, the forest of the hill country will be yours as well. Clear as much of the land as you wish. It's got nothing to do with God hasn't given it to us. What is he saying here? Clear as much as you wish. God has given you an open check. Clear as much as you wish. You know, somebody once said it this way. If you are given, if you have the opportunity to go fetch water from the river, go at least with a big, bu big bucket. Stop going to the river with a cup. So the kids don't laugh at you. Because what many of us have been doing is we are beginning to think that all that is in the river is just what this. It's just the size of your container that is too small. The size of your container may be too small. The size of your vision might be too small. The size of your faith might be too small. The size, the lens through which you look at things may be too small. Change your perspective. What should you do? Change your perspective. Say to change. You know, stop comparing notes with the people that are at the same level. You need to go outside where you are. Go outside where you are. Go outside where you are so you can dream. So God said to Abraham, Abraham, I know I told you, I gave you a vision. In Genesis chapter 15, God brought him out. I said, come. Come outside the tent. Look up. Can you count the number of the stars? And he said, no. He said, can you look out and see how far? As far as you can see. And do you know something about how far as you can see? Do you know what that scripture actually means? Let me say it to you very well. Now, vision and motion are tied together. Vision and motion, they are what? They are tied together. Now, look at it this way. If I stay here and I look, let's assume I'm outside. Okay, let's, let's first look at it this way. If I stayed here, I can only see so far. If I move from here to the end of this building, I would see what? Father. Why? Because I have moved. Amen? keep staying in one place and think this is all the world. You're just in this building. You say, you know what? This is everything in Canada. This is not everything in Canada. This is not everything. This is not everything. This is not everything. This is not everything. You know? So those of you that use social media, let me tell you what I use social media for so you understand very well. At times I get there, I have some accounts I subscribe to. And I just watch them. I just listen to some people talk. Oh, yeah. So, talk about salaries. 800K per annum. Yeah, that's what I want to listen to. That's what I want to listen to. Ah, but how is that happening? Because everywhere. You can't surround yourself with everybody. And say, oh, yeah, they, you, they even said it. They are even cutting jobs in Canada. Did those people come with two heads? Hello? No. I was sitting out with one of my friends last year, towards the end of last year, and he was telling me about an opportunity that came up for him. And he said, you know what, first of all, the Lord had been speaking to me about something. And then he said, well, and then uh, all of a sudden, somebody called him. He wants to sell a business for 12.5 million. And you know what, I think I'm going to buy it. Said, yeah, go for it. He said, I don't know where the money is going to come from, but I think I'm going to buy it. I said, yeah, go for it. So I think last week, the last week or two weeks ago, we were together, and he just said, okay, I said, oh, well, I'm in town. He said, okay, you know what? I'm sending you this address. Come meet me there. And when I saw the 12 million building, he had bought it. They have two heads. Praise God. Mission, vision, and sight, they are tied together. can 
always see the car of us either half full or half empty. Either half full or half empty. There are two ways to look at it. I love the way that uh, Joshua and Caleb, what they said in the book of Numbers to the rest of the children of Israel. They said, come, our God whom we serve, he's able to give us the land. Others choose to see the giants. We choose to see the fruits. We choose to see the potentials. Amen. Clear as much. This is what God is telling them. Clear as much as you want. Clear as much. Oh, there's no job. Start one. Start a company. Clear as much as you want. Amen. Our strength is truly true. No. Clear as much as you want. So let's look at a few keys tonight. A few keys tonight to taking over territories. Just give you two or three keys and then we'll go to pray. A few keys tonight to taking over the land. Number one, Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter 1. I will quickly look at verse um, 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. This is God talking to Joshua. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Verse 3, this is a promise of God. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites. In fact, the word translated Hittite in that scripture, the word, the children of Heth, and the word Heth means terror. And God said, even the land of the terrorists have given to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And to the great sea. Why did he, God, have you noticed God, God, the Lord talking about rivers, seas? You know why the Bible is talking about those things? Rivers move about. They don't stop. There's no end to your dominion. It's only when you stop that God stops. Okay, let's go forward. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. You see God's promises? God, has com God is committed to us. But look at verse 6. He now said there, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Stop being timid. Be strong. Say to yourself, be strong. Say to your neighbor, be strong. Be strong and of good courage. He didn't say you should have an ordinary level of courage. Be very courageous. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. The seven God is repeating it to them again. Only be strong and be very courageous. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Only be strong and very courageous. You want to take over what God has promised you? You're going to be very strong and very courageous. You're going to be strong and you have to balance your strength. You're going to be strong spiritually. You're going to be strong mentally. And you're going to be very diligent. You're going to be strong spiritually. You're going to be strong mentally. And you're going to be very diligent. Only be strong and very courageous. I've told you about being strong now. You're going to be strong in the place of prayers. 
you know, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, he has said that what he has given you, everywhere that the soul of your feet shall touch, he has given unto you. You march over the land as if you own it. You march over the land. This land is mine. This land will bow to me in the name of Jesus. Now, after that, you have to be courageous. What does courage mean? Courage doesn't mean there are no troubles. Courage doesn't mean things will always be safe. No. Believers are not, we are not brought up to be like sissies and, all, and cowards. No, we are not cowards. Praise God. We are not cowards. We are not cowards. Be very courageous. If you have the best weapon and the best skills, let me say this to you, uh, without courage, you will just live like a slave. With the most sophisticated weapons and the best skills, without courage, you just what? Live like what? Like a slave. The Bible says the children of Ephraim, they were armed to the teeth. But in the day of the battle, they ran back. They must be bold. Courage. Is, and your courage is not in yourself, it's not in your weapon. David said to Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, You have come to me like this, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Do you know, do you know what courage is? Courage is going to look like you are crazy when you are taking actions. Because David must be crazy. To everybody else, David was crazy. That was tantamount to suicide. That young man, people are going to say, You know what? We need to really rescue this guy. Stop listening to people that are trying to stop you. Eliab said to him, We know you are stubborn. You are supposed, you are only good enough to be running after the sheep and protecting them. And the young man is saying, I may not have fought a battle before, but this one, I may not be a professional um, soldier, but this one, I'll take him down. I'll take him down. I'll take him now. That's courage. And the Bible says to us in that first time, chapter 17, the Bible says all of a sudden, when Goliath was moving closer to David, what did David do? says, and David ran towards him. That is courage. It's like, what is he can? It's like myself and the can't want him to fight. And he's saying, I'll take you down. And then when you go to the battle, you, you know, if you watch wrestling, you know, and if you see the powerful one, you see the, the weak ones will always be running towards the edges. And rather than walking towards the edges, that was not what David did. Was, David ran towards him. He ran towards the giant. And he said, look, I've come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth. And as he threw, the, he only needed one. You thought that stone wasn't good enough. Do you think God hasn't given you all you need? He has given you all that you need. Remember, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. All things. You only need one stone. He threw that one stone. And according to the law of physics, according to the law of physics, Goliath was supposed to fall down, fall this way. But when the stone hit him, what did he do? He bowed down. He fell face down. Stop thinking you're too small. Stop thinking you're too young. You need to be courageous. Say be courageous. One of the things to do to build your courage is prayer. Let's look at the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 4. The book of Acts of Apostles chapter 4. You know, Peter walking with Jesus, the master, but there was something he lacked. He lacked courage. But let's look at what happened to him in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, right? Praise God. Let's go to that scripture. Acts of Apostles chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Look at this. 
And when they had prayed, what happened? The place where they were assembled together was shaken. Acts chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 31. Verse 31. The place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's read the last part together. And then what? And they spoke the word of God with boldness. With boldness. When they had prayed. When they had prayed. This is not boldness. It's not the same thing as self-confidence. When they had prayed. You know that the enemy senses fear in you. Do you know you can sense fear in people? You can sense fear. And that is how the enemy. That is how the enemy. That's how people even lose out in negotiations. When people sense fear in you, you commit to whatever. You bow to whatever. Oh, you know this, this job that they have just given me. Maybe another one will not come. Let me just quickly sign. Let me just quickly get this, take this offer like that. Let me just quickly do this. Maybe an offer that probably you could have asked for almost twice it. But it probably you felt because that was what they gave you. Let me just take it like that. No. Did I say she turned somewhere? Wait, where did I say she turned to? Sorry? Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Oh, there was another one that was going to get, get us to turn to. Philippians. Yeah, let's turn to the book of Philippians. We are brought up in the household of faith to live without fear. Philippians chapter 1. Book of Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 28. Philippians chapter 1, verse 28. Can we read it together? Let's read it together. One, two, good. It says what? And not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. In no way does God want you to be afraid. Not in any way terrified by your adversaries. Not in any way terrified by your adversaries. Not in any way. That's what I read in the NLT, the New Living Translation and the Passion Translation. God doesn't want you to be afraid of anything. He doesn't. The New Living Translation and the Passion Translation. Look at this. NLT says, don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. This is a sign to them that they're going to be destroyed when you should rise up in boldness. Don't be in any way terrified by your enemies. Don't be intimidated. Don't feel inferior. Let's find it in the Amplified Classic and the Passion. Okay, give me the Passion Translation. Quickly, Passion Translation at the AMPC. And then you will never be shaken or intimidated by your position that rises up against us. For your courage will only prove as a sure sign from God of their common destruction and that you have found a new life. Let me find it in the Amplified Classic AMPC. Do not for a moment be frightened. Hallelujah! Do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in any sense by your opponents and adversaries. For such constancy and fearlessness, can you see that? Fearlessness will be a clear sign, proof, and seal to them of their impending destruction, but a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation, and that from God. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid of the size of the mountain. Don't be afraid. Preach to somebody who decides to stop being afraid. Be confident. Are you been blessed tonight? Let us rise up to pray. Stop being afraid. Stop acting like you, you are clueless. You are not clueless. Stop feeling overwhelmed. Praise God. There's an anointing on the inside of you. 
Stop feeling intimidated. Stop feeling inadequate. Stop feeling inadequate. Stop feeling inadequate. It's a disappointment to God in the way some of us even pray and what we ask Him for. Are you getting it? It's a disappointment. We act as if we don't even trust Him by the way we pray. And some way some of us pray, God will just think, is this all you can ask me for? When He says, ask me for the nations, just thank God for His word to you tonight. Thank Him because His power is with you, His presence is with you. That like Joshua, he's going to fulfill his words unto you. Like the children of Israel, he's going to fulfill his words unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stop feeling inadequate. There's a reason why God chose Moses, who was not eloquent. There's a reason why he chose Moses, who was a stammerer, who was a stutterer. There's a reason why God chose him instead of the eloquent Joshua. I mean, the eloquent Aaron. There's a reason why God chose him. There's a reason why God chose Joshua, who never even saw the bush burn. And God said, look, young man, although you are the youngest, you are the one I'm going to choose. Joshua was never amongst the 70 elders of Israel, yet God chose him. Stop feeling that, well, God, I'm too small. I'm too young. Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible tells us that Jeremiah said to God, but God, I am a youth. God said, no, stop saying I'm a youth. Stop saying I'm a youth. Stop saying I'm too small. Stop saying I'm too young. Just say, Father, I believe your word. I refuse to walk in doubt. I want you to use your mouth tonight and take authority over every spirit of inadequacy and doubt. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over the spirit of inadequacy and doubt. Every spirit of fear, I take authority over you. In the name of Jesus. Marubra pasha pantishi prekuto rigetege rabrakutu. The word of the Lord has come unto me. I take it, I devour it, I walk in courage, I walk in boldness, I will not be intimidated. In the name of Jesus, I believe all that God has spoken to me. In the name of Jesus, I go forward. In every direction, I go forward. In business, in career, I go forward. In ministry, I go forward, taking new grounds. In the name of Jesus, expanding to nations, to cities, dominating and walking in dominion checking over territories i go forward in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus maro prinda shim brekoto ribra kantai breaking day bro mazo pranda shi prangoto father lord we thank you in jesus mighty name we are prayed in jesus mighty name we are prayed just listen to me say some things to you one of the worst things let me say some things to you one of the biggest lies that the devil had told many believers is that you know you can't it's either or you can't walk in faith and also walk in dominion in business you know the book of genesis chapter 20 genesis chapter 20 the bible says the word of the lord came unto um unto unto abraham and the lord said the bible makes us understand that after abimelech had taken his wife the Lord appeared unto Abimelech in Genesis chapter 20 and said, Look, the man whose wife you are taking is a prophet. So, number one, Abraham was a prophet. But, however, in the book of Genesis chapter 14, Genesis chapter 14, Abraham was so wealthy that the Bible says he took 318 men that were working for him that were on his payroll. Pay very close attention because most of, most of us don't really understand how strong Abraham was in his days. One man had 318 men on his payroll at the least. Genesis chapter 14. At the least. And this 318 men, he took them to go and fight the kings of nations and he defeated them. Let that sink in. Nations feared Abraham. In fact, when he got to the time of Isaac, and when it goes to the time of Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, that makes us understand that when they saw that they couldn't stop Isaac, they had to come to him and say, you know what, let us have a pact that you, know, you will not destroy us and that your children wouldn't destroy us. Stop undermining God's power that is at work in you. Stop it. Stop it. Stop feeling too safe. You know, this thing that we have, oh, stop it, stop it. 
stop it. You need to stop this small mindedness and the selfish mind. That's what God has asked me to tell you tonight. But God wants you to dream endlessly, He wants you to see things that are beyond your wildest imagination. And stop hesitating. Stop hesitating. Stop hesitating. See yourself as that person that's going to give scholarships in this land. Oh yeah, well, all I just want to do is just have a job. You know, get six figures and then buy a big house and then we are fine. Stop it! Stop it! I see people that will buy the whole street and knock on their doors. Are you willing to sell this building? Praise God. We'll buy it from you. You see strip clubs in that place? You know some of those stores that they've converted to marijuana places now? Go knock on those doors. I want to buy this building for you, but we're not selling it. Okay, how much do you think the whole building is worth? Uh, half a million dollars. Okay, I'll give you somewhere 50,000. Just move out. Just because I just want to possess this place for God. That land will be conquered. Not just your room and parlor. Amen? Say, not just my room and parlor. That land's lands let's stop dreaming small oh, what if we don't have the mortgage to pay stop that there's always money in the economy amen God wants to change the way you think the way you speak and the way you see hallelujah lastly Joshua chapter 21 that's where we're going to pray from Joshua 21, verse 43 and 45. Verses 43 and 45. Joshua chapter 21, verses 43 and 45. The Bible says, The Lord gave unto Israel all the land that he had promised them. Joshua 21, verse 43 to 45. He gave to them all the land that he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it. And remember the word possession means what? There was force involved. Verse 45 says, 45 quickly, the Bible says, not a word failed of any good thing that the Lord had spoken. Now lift both hands up to God and I say, in the name of Jesus, I declare, not a word of my vision, not a word shall fail of all that God has promised. Again, not a word shall fail. Begin just the not a word shall fail. In the name, it's not a function of my finances. It's a function of his word. It's not a function of my age. It's a function of his word. It's a function of his promises. Now says, faithful is he who has promised. Not a word shall fail. In the name of Jesus. Not a word shall fail. Not a word shall fail. Not a word. Not a word shall fail. Nothing. Not a word shall fail of any good thing that the Lord has spoken to me. Not a word shall fail concerning my children. Not a word shall fail in the name of Jesus. Nobody is promoting you in that workplace. Go start your business. Not a word shall fail because God is with you. The oil is on you. Not a word shall fail because you declare it. Not a word shall fail. In the name of Jesus, not a word shall fail. Hey, in the name of Jesus, not a word shall fail. And the next big thing that is going to happen in this city, in the name of Jesus, my world will hear about me. In the name of Jesus, my world shall hear about me. In the name of Jesus. Finally tonight, Deuteronomy chapter 2. Look at that verse. That was where we started. From verse 24 to 25, Deuteronomy chapter 2. From that verse 24 to 25, Deuteronomy chapter 2, 24 to 25, quickly, Deuteronomy 2. The Bible says, fine, give it to me in the New Living Translation again. I really love that scripture. You're going to die. I really, really love that scripture. I really, really love that scripture. Look at it. Let's read it again. Moses continued. Uh-huh. Then the Lord said, now get moving. Hey guys, what should you do? Get moving. Look at the person that's next to you. Tell that person, get moving. Come on, you've been on that spot too long enough. Tell that person, get moving. Stop telling me you plan to. Just do it. Again, okay? what should you do? Get moving. Uh-huh. Cross the Anon Gorge. Uh-huh. Look, I will hand over to you. God is handing over to you. Amen. He says, yeah, I will hand over to you, Sion, the king of Sion, the Hamorite king of Heshbon, and I will give you his land. What should you do? Attack him. Just so say attack and occupy. That's going to be our strategy. Attack. 
Stop thinking it's going to come to you. Just say, I'm going to attack. Uh -huh. And I'm going to occupy the land. Now look at verse 25. Look at verse 25. Beginning today, ah, I will make pe the people throughout the earth terrified because of you. When they hear reports about you, what will happen? They will travel. Amen. So say, I'm afraid of them. They are afraid of you. You just don't understand. They are what? They are afraid of you. They are afraid of you. You show up like this. I, I hope that person is not going to take over my job. I am here. I'm here. Anywhere I go. I don't compete. I dominate. Amen. Have you been blessed tonight? Give the Lord a big shout of praise tonight. Just put your hands together for him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The champions are here. Glory to God. We don't stay in one place and say we have we we've won this small place and that's all. No. Praise God. It's time for us to give to God. Let's give to God tonight. Let's give tonight to God tonight. Hallelujah. Prepare your offerings. Prepare your tithes. Share the message with somebody. Just tell them, keep moving. We are taking new territories. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Prepare your tithes. Prepare your offerings. Hallelujah. We're going to give to God tonight. Father, thank you for the opportunity to give. Just give him praise for the opportunity to give. Dear the blood, I give you praise for the opportunity to give. As I give tonight, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men bring unto my bosom. In the name of Jesus, I have more than enough. Hallelujah. The kingdom is expanding. We are taking new grounds in every area of life financially, spiritually, economically, in every industry. In engineering, we are taking over. In banking, we are taking over. In innovation, we are taking over. In technology, we are taking over. In the name of, in real estate, we are taking over. Come on, I want to hear of your exploits. Hallelujah, praise God. I want to hear of your exploits. Father, we thank you. We we'll worship you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed and somebody say, and let us share the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And somebody say, and surely God's goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for coming. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. We'll continue our evangelism. Then have a wonderful one. Praise God.